Stan had a legacy that we at Power are going to perpetuate and protect. Uh, 20 years ago, post Marvel, he said, I want to write new stories. I want to come up with new ideas. I want to come up with new universes. And I want me and me, meaning me and Pow, to be the protector of his legacy and of his IP. And that's what we're doing. So we're here at uh, Comic Con, 17th year for me, first year without Stan. Legacy came very easily to me from Stan. He said, if you don't do it, I'm going to kill you. Uh, I was uh, the executive vice president at Marvel for many, many years, um, and I'd gotten to know Stan. You know, I, I was obviously, like everybody else, I was enthralled by his, his storytelling when I was a child, and then I was just blown away by his passion when I was at Marvel. And then when I got a chance to come work for him directly, it was, it was the thrill of my life. Uh, I got to know him for the, for the gentle and kind soul that he was at that point. Um, and, and his legacy means a great deal to me. His, his memory is so important. Um, <clears throat> unlike other icons of the past, Stan endures. Um, you know, Elvis, Marilyn, James Dean. These are, these are people who exist on a body of work and nostalgia from the past. Stan moves forward through the things that Marvel still does with his IPs and the things that, that Gil and myself and a bunch of really talented, talented co-creators are doing uh, to make sure that there is never a world without Stan Lee. We're here at Comic-Con to introduce Audible to the fans. Uh, it's his first Audible book. And when he first learned that you could read or hear a book through earphones, it was like a miracle to him. At that point in his life, his hearing wasn't as great as it used to be. And when he heard this, he said, I'm in. I've got to do this. I've got to create something that will be memorialized uh, where people will be able to listen. He couldn't believe it happens. It's real and it's magic. This is his next superhero and one that uh, he had a chance to really spend a fair amount of time, a considerable amount of time working on and he worked closely with the writers and the other creators to help develop it and bring it to a point of where uh, they turned it into the Audible book. And now um, it's out for the marketplace for his fans and I know that they'll be thrilled and hearing that he did this and also that he did the forward to the book as well. And, and again, as, as Gil says, this is just, just one of many. Um, this week we've announced a few, um, including a, uh, a TV show that we're in development on with uh, CBS television called Supermom. Um, we also uh, announced uh, uh, Restless, which is a um, Native American uh, superhero, really sort of following through on Stan's uh, uh, being the, the, one of the founders, for, forerunners in um, diversity. Uh, we also announced uh, a few weeks ago Superhero Kindergarten with um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, and then one of my absolute favorites, um, The Amazing Stan, which looks at a um, young Stan, and I mean as a kid, um, sort of getting into and out of trouble with that incredible imagination that he has uh, that later on would give us some of the greatest storytelling that we've seen ever. Gil has said this to me all the time, and I, I kind of got to see it as well, is that Stan was constantly creating. The thing that really, really amazed me about Stan is that, that he would say things like, he'd always say, Bob, I've got, I, I've got this idea that no one has ever heard or thought of before, and no one's ever seen this before. And, and, I always, and I don't know why I always said, Stan, come on, everybody's seen every story before. But then he would tell me the story, and he was right. It, it was different. He wasn't living on past laurels. He wasn't rehashing. He wasn't saying things like, well, I'm going to create a character and he's going to climb up the wall and I'm going to call him Arachnid Boy. He wasn't doing that. He was constantly coming up with new stuff and, and he had this incredible sense of being able to look at the world and see things that other people didn't see. He was a kind person. He loved fans. He loved relating to uh, legions of fans that would always stop him. He uh, always would stop for an autograph, to shake somebody's hand, and then later on, he couldn't understand why everyone had a cell phone where you now had to pose for a picture or a selfie. <laughs> but 
It always, he always stopped. He always paid attention to the fans. And besides, he loved being photographed anyway. And, and more importantly, I think, the Stan Lee who was five minutes after that fan left was the exact Stan Lee he was when that fan was there. Uh, Stan was um, so excited to meet his fans. And I tell fans all the time when they tell me how excited they were, I tell them, you know what, Stan was just as excited to meet you um, because he really loved interacting with his fans and he loved them so, so much. And he really was, that was his greatest gift, is that he was so kind and generous. Um, you know, Stan Lee gave us the superhero story, but, but his kindness, his humanity, really showed us what a true hero was. Now, nobody would have ever imagined, we never imagined. I mean, we knew we had something really cool. Um, but I was there, you know, in the days where um, I started telling somebody about Iron Man, uh, and they thought I was talking about the Iron Man triathlon. Um, you know, we really, really, um, somebody I was talking about this the other day where they were saying, um, you know, we've had success, but, you know, obviously not the Marvel success. And I said, it's an, it's an unfair litmus test. I mean, who would have ever imagined that this is where it would go? Um, but in hindsight, you know, it makes sense um, because the stories that Stan Lee created are about people. Um, Stan made you care more about Peter Parker than Spider-Man. Stan made Tony Stark more interesting outside of the suit than in it. So it's accessible. It is great storytelling. It's great content. It has very little to do with the superhero part of it. I mean, obviously, there's a very specific niche that loves that but this is a story that that my mom can go and enjoy uh and and my mom really doesn't like superheroes very much before the marvel explosion and people knew about superheroes and marvel per se in the sense that they do now stan was always embarrassed to say that he was a writer he felt that it was the lowest rung on the totem pole comic book writer and a comic book writer as well. But when he was at a party and people asked him what he did, he said, I'm a writer. And then he would ask, well, a writer of what? And he would always walk away. So now, years later, uh, creations later, success later, uh, he's finally recognized, I think now and for future generations, as the creator of modern day fairy tales.